Hello students, welcome to Edwin. In the last session, we have discussed about Mendeleev's periodic table and how this table was made that we have discussed in the last session. And in this session, we will discuss about this table that means Mendeleev's periodic table in detail. That means what are the achievements of this table and what are the limitations of this table that we will discuss now. So let's have the achievements first. What are the achievements of Mendeleev's periodic table? To know about these achievements, we should first see the table. So this is Mendel's periodic table and in this periodic table if you look closely the atomic mass of cobalt is 58.93 and the atomic mass of nickel is 58.71 so clearly cobalt is having higher atomic mass than nickel and it is placed right before nickel and all the other elements in this table are arranged with increasing atomic mass that means the elements which is having lower atomic mass they are placed first and then the elements which is having higher atomic mass they are placed later on but in case of cobalt and nickel the order is reversed here similar is the case with vanadium and chromium in case of vanadium the atomic mass is 50.94 and the atomic mass of chromium is 50.20 so here also we are seeing that vanadium is having higher atomic mass and it is placed right before chromium which is having lower atomic mass of 50.20 so why Mendeleev was not following this trend in this in this situation in this situation of cobalt nickel and vanadium chromium so the reason is that when Mendeleev was preparing this table he was thinking about two trend the number one trend is atomic mass elements should be arranged with increasing atomic mass and this is the reason why all the other elements in this table are arranged with increasing atomic mass he was also thinking about their properties that means the elements which is having similar properties they should be placed in same group so this is the reason the second thing the second property of the second trend that means the properties is the reason why he placed cobalt and nickel in such position so look at cobalt in case of cobalt the elements which is right below cobalt are rhodium and iridium and the properties of rhodium and iridium is same or similar with cobalt so cobalt, rhodium and iridium they are having similar properties and then they should be placed in the same group. Again in case of nickel the elements which is right below nickel that means palladium and platinum they are also having similar properties and they show similar nature that means nickel, palladium and platinum they should be also placed in the same group but they are not following that means cobalt and not, uh, nickel are not following their atomic mass trend. So here in this situation Mendeleev give more priority to their properties. And this is the reason why he placed cobalt right before nickel. And same is the case with vanadium and chromium also. So this was Mendeleev's approach and he gave the positions of cobalt, nickel, vanadium, chromium in this way. After this, the next table that was prepared is modern periodic table. And in modern periodic table, it was also observed that the position given by Mendeleev to these elements is correct. He was very much precise in giving the position of this elements that means cobalt, nickel, vanadium, chromium. So this is the achievement of this Mendeleev's periodic table. Now let's discuss about another achievement by Mendeleev. When Mendeleev was preparing his table, there were only 63 elements known. And the scientists of that era like Newlands, they thought that there will be no newer discoveries. But Mendeleev's approach was different. He said that no, there will be some discoveries after this also. And for this reason, he left certain gaps in his table. Along with this, he gave name to those gaps and he predicted the properties also. So isn't it a bold move by Mendeleev that I know there will be some discoveries in future, I have certain names for them and I know the properties also. And how he gave name? He gave name by using a prefix eka. Eka is a Sanskrit word, it means one. And this eka prefix was given to the name of the element which is right before to the gap in the same group. That means if there is a group and there is a gap in, his, in the group and the elements which is before to the gap, to the name of that element, the prefix eka was given. For example, eka boron, eka aluminium, eka silicon. These are the names of certain gaps in Mendeleev's periodic table. Later on, when modern periodic table was discovered, it was observed that the properties given by Mendeleev for eka boron, eka aluminium and eka silicon is similar to scandium, gallium and germanium. This scandium, gallium and germanium, these three elements were not known when Mendeleev was giving his periodic table. But their properties matches with the predicted properties of Mendeleev. For example, the properties predicted by Mendeleev for eka aluminium is like that its atomic mass will be 68, 
its formula for its oxide will be E2O3, where E means eka aluminium. Again, its formula for its chloride will be ECl3. So these are the predicted properties of Mendeleev. And when gallium was discovered, it was observed that the atomic mass of gallium is 69.7, which is quite closer to 68. Along with this, its formula for its oxide is Ga2O3 and its formula for its chloride is GaCl3. So these properties of gallium almost matches with the predicted properties of Mendeleev. So the, when gallium was discovered, it was placed to the name given to Eka Aluminium. So this bold move by Mendeleev was definitely a success. So this is the reason why this bold move by Mendeleev is the biggest achievement of Mendeleev's periodic table. Now let's discuss about some other achievement of this Mendeleev's periodic table. Noble gases like helium, neon, argon are very less reactive and they have very limited presence in our atmosphere. And due to these reasons, these noble gases are discovered very lately. And when these noble gases are discovered, they could be placed in Mendeleev's periodic table without altering the existing order. So this is another achievement of Mendeleev's periodic table that means where newer elements could be included without altering anything. So this is another achievement. Apart from this, another achievement of Mendeleev's periodic table is that when Mendeleev was arranging the elements with increasing atomic mass, he was able to correct the atomic mass of certain elements. For example, he corrected the atomic mass of gold and platinum. So basically, these are the main advantages of Mendeleev's periodic table or achievements of this periodic table. And Mendeleev was pretty much successful in his attempt of classification of elements. So this is the reason why Mendeleev is known as the father of periodic table. In science, the most popular award given is called as Nobel Prize. And Mendeleev never got a Nobel Prize when he was alive. After his death also, this Nobel Prize could not be given to him because Nobel Prize is not awarded to a person after his death. But to mark his contribution towards the making process of periodic table, the element having the atomic number of 101 is named after him, which is Mendelevium. Students, apart from having different advantages of Mendeleev's periodic table, there are certain limitations which are also associated with this periodic table. And now we will discuss those limitations one by one. So let's start. In Mendeleev's periodic table, no importance was given to electronic configuration. So this term electronic configuration means it is the pattern in which electrons are distributed in an element. And Mendeleev didn't say anything about electronic configuration. Due to which in his periodic table there are certain cases in which elements having different properties are also placed in the same group. For example, in Mendeleev's periodic table in the first group, along with lithium, sodium and potassium, copper, silver and gold are placed. But this copper, silver and gold are not same with lithium, sodium and potassium. They are different and due to which in modern periodic table, this copper, silver and gold are placed in a different group. They are given a different position. But Mendeleev gave the same position or same group for both copper, silver and gold and lithium, sodium and potassium. So this is one of the limitation of Mendeleev's periodic table. The next limitation are, and which is one of the most important limitation of Mendeleev's periodic table is that Mendeleev was not able to give any fixed position or proper position to hydrogen. He didn't give any position to hydrogen because hydrogen showed some certain characteristics of alkali metals and certain characteristics of halogens. But what are alkali and what are halogen? We should know them first. Alkali elements or alkali metals are the elements which are like lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. These are called alkali elements and they are in the first position. They are placed in the first position or first group of Mendeleev's periodic table and in the modern periodic table also. And halogens are like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. These are called halogen. They are mainly gases and they are in the seventh group of Mendeleev's periodic table or 17th group of modern periodic table. And hydrogen showed similar characteristics or same kind of characteristics in certain cases like alkali elements and in certain cases like halogens. And now we'll see what are the similarities. First, let's see what are the similarities between hydrogen and alkali metals or alkali elements. The alkali elements like lithium, sodium, potassium, they contain one valence electron. Valence electron means the outermost electron. In in atom, in atom there are certain orbitals and the electrons which are placed in the outermost orbital they are called valence electron and all the 
all the alkali metals like lithium, sodium, potassium, they contains one electron in their valence orbital. And hydrogen, which consists of only one electron, it is his valence electron because it is the outermost electron, definitely. So, this hydrogen and all the alkali metals, they all contain one valence electron. So, this is one of the similarity. The next similarity is that like the alkali metals, hydrogen also form similar compounds with oxygen, sulfur and other halogens. Halogens that means chlorine, bromine, pro, fluorine, these are called halogens. So, hydrogen and alkali metals, they form similar kind of compounds. For example, if you take sodium, the compounds from our sodium are in this table, you can see that sodium is forming along with chlorine, it is forming NaCl and hydrogen is also forming HCl, which is similar. Their formula is kind of similar. If you replace Na by H, it becomes HCl. And both of these compounds are available in our environment or they exist. For, for example, the next compound formed by sodium is Na2O. Hydrogen is forming H2O. Sodium forms Na2S and hydrogen is forming H2S. So from this table, we can notice that both sodium and hydrogen, they are forming similar kind of compound. That means there must be certain similarities between them. So this is one of the next or one of the important similarity between hydrogen and alkali metals because sodium is a alkali metal. Now let's see what are the similarities between hydrogen and halogens. Halogen contains seven electrons in their valence orbital and they require only one electron to attain stability. Stability means they want the electronic configuration of noble gases. So they require one electron that means to attain eight electron which is the most of the which is electronic configuration of most of the noble gases and hydrogen which consists of one electron it also require one electron to attain the electronic configuration of helium helium is consists of two electrons and it is a noble gas that means it is a stable electronic configuration and hydrogen also require only one electron to attain stability that means both hydrogen and all the halogens they require extra one electron to attain stability so this is one of the similarity between them hydrogen and halogens. The next similarity is that hydrogen exists in our environment as H2 that means in diatomic molecule. H2 means it consists of two hydrogen atom. In our universe or in our atmosphere hydrogen doesn't exist as hydrogen that means only one H it doesn't exist like that it exists as H2. Similarly all the halogens also exist as Cl2, F2, Br2, I2 that means they also exist as in diatomic molecule formula. So that means there must be certain similarity between hydrogen and halogen. The next similarity is that hydrogen and halogen both form similar kind of covalent compound with metals and non-metals. So they are they mainly form similar kind of compounds. So these are the certain similarities between hydrogen with halogen. So we can see that hydrogen is showing certain characteristics of alkali metals in it is also also again showing certain characteristics of halogens due to which Mendeleev got confused to give any fixed position to this hydrogen and it is one of the biggest limitation of Mendeleev's periodic table to know about the next limitation we should know one term first and the term is isotopes isotopes means the elements having same atomic number but different atomic mass since they have same atomic number they are same atoms that means similar kind of atoms but their atomic mass is different for example hydrogen exists as three isotopes and its isotopes are hydrogen deuterium and tritium so these are the three isotopes of hydrogen in their formula we can see that the lower subscript is same and this lower subscript means their atomic number which is one but their upper subscript is different which is one two and three that means they have different atomic mass of one two and three in the three isotopes so this is isotopes and the properties of isotopes are same in case of same element that means if i am talking about hydrogen and the isotopes of hydrogen they all of them show similar kind of chemical and physical properties that means they show chemical similar chemical reaction so this is isotopes and these isotopes could not be included in mendeleev's periodic table though when mendeleev gives his periodic table these isotopes were not discovered but after that when these isotopes were discovered they could not be included in his table because in Mendeleev's periodic table he said that the properties of an element is the periodic function of its atomic mass that means with change in the atomic mass the properties changes 
and the elements having different atomic mass they should be placed in different position in the periodic table but in case of isotopes though they have different atomic mass but they have same properties they should have given in the same position they should be placed in the same position but mendeleev said no they, if they have different mass they should be placed in different position so due to which these isotopes could not be able to discover or included in his periodic table so this is one of the limitation of mendel's periodic table the last limitation of mendel's periodic table is that in his periodic table the increase in atomic mass is not fixed or it, you can say is not regular that means from one element to the other element the gap of the atomic mass is not fixed in certain cases the gap is very high in certain cases the gap is very low due to which it is very difficult to predict how many number of elements will be discovered in future that means what is the number of element that is left between two elements in case of heavy elements it becomes a lot more difficult to predict the exact number of atoms or elements that will be discovered in future so this is another limitation of mendeleev periodic table so that's all in this session so these are the main limitation they had i have said so and in this session we have discussed about the achievements also and along with this we also discuss about the limitation so this is all about mendeleev periodic table and in the next session we will discuss or we'll talk about modern periodic table <music>